Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Oh, boy. <laughs> My name is Dill Diligence. I'm nominally in charge, but we're a crack team of lone wolves, nerds, troublemakers, outcasts, academic heretics, and general pains in the bureaucracy. We're going to get sued. Is that what you left the call a second ago to go record? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shut up. We haven't introduced you. Keep going. <laughs> and I'm Nathan Simmons, and I'm ready to begin the injection. Target the mouth as much as possible. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast where we try to find the silver linings in some of cinema's bleakest kaiju-filled endings. Yes, we do. I thought it was important, mm-hmm. considering how much of this movie is consists of <laughs> extremely <laughs> serious board meetings. Mm-hmm. For me to wear a nice suit, hop on Skype with you fellas, and discuss Shin Godzilla the way it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was not a single board meeting in the movie I watched. (laughs) I hate you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Extremely... Like serious close up snap zooms, mm. you know, giant screens with 37 people in a room discussing nothing, basically. <laughs> I mean, I had like a meeting with some military guys at one point. Yeah, you met uh, Jean Reno. Yeah. yeah. You talked to him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the French. You, the, a lot of people. We always played the bit right. for people that don't know about it. <laughs> what bit? <laughs> God damn it. So anyways, we're talking Shin Godzilla this week. At least two of us are. And then two of our guests, they're coming on. And Mally watched Godzilla 1998, apparently, (laughs) as was foretold. So I guess we should set this up, too. So we went back and forth, I think, on this episode Mm -hmm. more than any other episode previously. Yeah. And we talked about which Godzilla are we going to do? Because Minus One had come out. And we were all really hyped on it. Immediately put it on the schedule after seeing it. And before that, I had even said, look, it's like an anniversary for Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Why don't we put one of the movies on? And I suggested 98 originally because I was like, that's fun to rip into that movie. But looking at the past couple episodes we've done, if you exclude Judas, maybe it's all kind of like Mortal Kombat, stay alive, (laughs) shit like that. So we went back and forth. And then we realized Toho doesn't put out physical releases of their movies for like a year Mm -hmm. and they're not available on streaming so we didn't have minus one available to us to like go back and revisit if we needed to to take notes and whatnot Mm -hmm. so we went to Shin Godzilla. They were like, I don't know. Let's go back to 98. Like, we went back and forth so much on this one before settling on Shin. No, you went back and forth. <laughs> I was locked in from the start. True, true. I did send a text that said, fuck it. We're doing Godzilla 98. Yep. And then Dustin texted our guests who were despondent. <laughs> you so guys didn't I- see the full extent of it. I had a, like, days-long thread of, mm-hmm. like, just gif after gif of crying, just bitching and molded <laughs> about doing 98. And so we, we reversed we reversed decision. Mm-hmm. And uh, much like the bureaucracy in this movie, we went back and forth for quite some time yeah. before ultimately deciding on an action plan. You know what I mean? So now we have the podcast director of agriculture mm-hmm. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't wait to talk about the lower thirds of this movie. Uh Jesus Christ. But I guess we have to bring on our two guests now. So let me go ahead and give you the first one. He is a node Godzilla expert. Mm. And I guess this is finally the first good movie we've had him on. I I would like to hear his thoughts on that. But please give a warm audio welcome for... Wait a minute. Let me get the soundboard up here. Let me get you some cheers going. Jesus, you have one fucking job, DC. (laughs) For Michael (laughs) Maz. Welcome, buddy. Thank you for having me on a good episode. Hey. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. A good movie for once. <laughs> good movie. Yeah, we'll see how the episode goes. We don't know. You're, you're getting awfully optimistic. Moss, you better buckle the fuck up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't do this one without our other known Godzilla expert. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give him that title because I want him to feel the weight of that. But well, Godzilla's really the Michael Myers of the sea, right? <laughs> he really is. He truly is. So I'm just assuming this is the first Godzilla movie he's ever seen. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. He's, he's heard vaguely of the concept of a god mm-hmm. and a Zilla together so let's bring on JT Kelly thank you and that introduction that you gave Moss couldn't win for either one of us so I had no <laughs> idea who you were going to introduce until you said Moss mm-hmm. So, guys, Godzilla, this is going to be a, an action-packed episode already, which is with the amount of people we got on, but mm-hmm. Shin Godzilla, Nathan, this is your pick. Yeah. I know we talked about all the different variations of the Godzilla movies we could have done, right. but why ultimately did you settle on Shin Godzilla? Because I think it, it's worth dissecting. It's such a weird take on what a Godzilla movie can be. In, in some ways, I think it is the full antithesis of Godzilla minus one, mm-hmm. in that 
Minus one is all about, you know, the triumph of the human spirit. And then Shin Godzilla is like, wouldn't it actually fucking suck to have to try to cut through the red tape to fight Godzilla? And, <laughs> and, and it's it ends up being a movie that I find more interesting than entertaining. Yeah. When it does go for those full on creature feature moments, there's some buck wild shit in this movie. There really is. <laughs> yeah, this movie I did a little bit of research on was essentially a response to the Japanese bureaucracy's response to the Fukushima nuclear disaster right. and the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. Yeah. And I was reading up about, you know, people dissecting and analyzing this movie. And I think Ollie Barter Mm -hmm. of Forbes summarized this movie best when he said this film depicted the Japanese government's, quote, complex and corpulent bureaucratic ways, unable to deal with a crisis in any kind of efficient or fluid way. Yeah. Like. I watched this for the first time for this episode. Okay. And when the movie starts, it's a lot of quick cuts. It's a lot of introductions to characters. I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, this is coming at me a mile a minute. I got to try and keep up with it. And about 30 minutes into the movie, when the lower third started attributing helicopters, not even like the people in the helicopters, just here is the specific model of helicopter. I was like, okay, I don't need to keep up with this shit anymore. I don't need to, (laughs) I don't need to log in my brain who this person is, what his job title is, what they're doing. So I'm also curious if you, are you familiar at all with his? Hideaki Anno's work, no. like Neon Genesis Evangelion, any of that? I have, we talked about, Moss and I talked about Neon Genesis <laughs> like not that long ago. Yeah. And I was like, I might start it because it's not that long, but yeah. I knew he, they were the team behind this movie. Right. And I'm assuming that this is a humor based thing, right? It's yeah. like, here's all these titles, here's all these introductions, none of it fucking matter. <laughs> yeah, it is fully like a satire. And mm-hmm. then there's bits of, of Evangelion that are like that, where it's like, you know, we're, we're kind of making fun of the tropes in anime culture, youth culture in Japan. Yeah. This movie could have been a big crowd pleaser. Toho wanted a crowd pleasing action movie. Yeah. And he was like, no, I'm going to make a movie for the, the the common man in Japan who's fucking mad at their government. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of his whole deal. I mean, ever since he was working on stuff like uh, he worked on Nausicaa with, uh, with uh, Miyazaki, like he's been, you can see anime influence all over the action scenes in this movie too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it's... <laughs> It's a, it's a particular kind of satire that doesn't 100% translate here, I think. And even worse, because I watched the dub, which was the only version available on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. And it's the Funimation team doing the dub. So every <laughs> once in a while, I'm like, well, that's just three Vegetas in a room. Like, <laughs> that's, that's Goku leading the charge, right? Rando yeah. literally sounds like a South Park character. Like whenever he gets mad, he's like, I told you to take care of it. Like, it's, it's really intense in the wrong way uh so i watched this movie late at night in my bedroom priscilla asleep next to me Mm -hmm. and we'll talk about when we get there but the first reveal of godzilla Uh oh (laughs) like we'll talk about it i thought i was gonna wake her up and piss her off i was laughing i was stifling (laughs) laughter choking it back so fucking hard this movie is so fucking funny like it is once you realize what you're in for because Mm -hmm. again the poster art for this movie like the whole marketing campaign around it seemed like this was a straight up horror movie yes totally it set the tone for like you're gonna be scared fucking shit this movie and it kind of delivers in some aspects of that Godzilla's the scariest fucking guy I've ever seen in my life (laughs) Michael Caine is crying trying to (laughs) warn everybody but no like I I did not expect what I got but I was so happy once it clicked for me I was like Uh okay I see what they're doing now like again once those helicopters started to get a lower third I'm like right, this shit doesn't matter Okay, okay Okay, I'm in. Well, also, our main character gets reintroduced each time he's yep. given a new title yep. in the government, <laughs> yeah. which is so funny to me. Would you watch the subtitled version like I did? Mm-hmm. The lower thirds, first of all, take up literally the lower third of the screen. Right. Like, it's not just in the lower third. Yeah, I remember that from the first time I watched it. <laughs> yeah. And then they put the subtitles on top of that. Mm-hmm. So you're only getting like 40 to 50% of the screen where you can see what's going on. Yeah. So like most of the movie, I'm like struggling to keep up with what the fuck is happening but i i gotta say I, like i said I, I enjoyed my time watching it it's a divisive film and it mm-hmm. makes total sense why some people do not groove to this at all you know what would it be fair to say this is godzilla's malignant <laughs> oh you, either get it or you don't i wish godzilla whipped a chair at somebody in this movie let's just threw a chair at a helicopter hey man he whipped a couple of full gold sedans like, <laughs> he threw a bridge yeah when that bridge comes flying out of the smoke <laughs> It's the best. I mean, at one point, he eats a taxi. He sure does. He stepped on Hank Azaria, and he was fine. (laughs) He sure did. (laughs) Let's turn to Moss. How many times have you seen this movie? Fuck, like... 30 times. I I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that at all. Bro, go outside. (laughs) 
Initial reaction versus how you felt on this rewatch. Initial reaction, I, I got all of the horror elements that we're going for, mm -hmm. but I've really enjoyed it. Uh, every other time watching it for like the satire mm -hmm. it's just like a really solid movie for me it's uh it's my second favorite godzilla movie wow Bye. minus one yeah yeah jt how about you i've only seen it like maybe four or five what if he said like 47 times? yeah because <laughs> i remember i saw it in theaters mm -hmm. and that was a, an experience because i remember it was just like moss said the horror part of it i was just waiting for the big hype trailer moments. I was like, I know this dude gets scarier and I'm ready for that, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after watching it uh, recently and then out of theaters and stuff like that, I'm just like, you know what? The CGI doesn't look that good. Like mm. that looks weird. It, it was in a, in a theater setting. It really kind of shined through. Mm -hmm. I think the CG on the first evolution of Godzilla was done separately from the rest. If I'm not mistaken. See, I didn't know that. That makes sense though. Yeah. Yeah. They had to redo some of it because yeah. they had a dude in a suit for part of the filming and yeah. then it just did not look right. Yeah. Shocker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That definitely checks out. And then Mally 98. How'd you feel on the first watch versus <laughs> the rewatch? Boys, I was, I saw this movie in theater. I was so hyped for it. Yeah. Y'all remember that viral marketing they did on New Year's? You're <laughs> laser, laser, laser. Which I think I might get canceled for saying that. <laughs> so I, back, I backed off on the second lizard. <laughs> Wait, do you guys remember the shit they did on New Year's though? Mm. New Year's specifically? I don't. Yeah, like, so it was like, they cut, like, there was like a minute left until the ball dropped. They went to commercial. They came back and like, it was like, three, two, one. Then Godzilla burst through the fucking building. Oh. Come with me. Yeah, and then fucking Puff Daddy started playing. And then it just <laughs> like, <laughs> was the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> release date and then they actually cut back to the actual ball drop shit was crazy what a time to be alive was it minus one that came out of the cinerama dome oh right or was it was that shin godzilla no it was uh it was godzilla king of the monsters yeah. that's right of course of course we went with that version mm. that's another thing i, I want to throw out like how what is everybody's kind of past with godzilla as a franchise like we don't i don't have enough time <laughs> <laughs> say, we cannot go to jt about that we okay, cannot fair enough 98 all fucking day boys <laughs> 98 was my first because i was eight years old when it came out mm. and then my mom had a actual van that had like the vhs player built into the back seats Ooh. hell yeah we had the old school godzillas on tape but i don't remember any of them because i was like six years old watching them uh -huh. and then when i got to like 16 i saw the original mm. and dug it and then i watched you know the ones here after there like just sporadically i don't remember fucking anything about them really mm -hmm. but when 2014 came out that kind of revitalized my interest in them mm -hmm. and there's been four movies technically when the new one comes out in the monsterverse yeah i've enjoyed half of them i've enjoyed <laughs> two of them but in a totally different way than I enjoy the Japanese output. So same. Yeah. I, I, as a kid, you know, it, it's just that excitement of the sort of superhero level action, right? Yeah. Like I was super into Ultraman and Power Rangers and all of that. And Godzilla just kind of slot perfectly in that sort of milieu. Yeah. And I watched, yeah, all the old school ones. Anytime there was like a marathon, I would check those out. Yeah. And then, yeah, as I, be I got back into Godzilla around, yeah, when 2014 came out and I was like, oh yeah, I love this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I went back and bought a bunch of the movies that I hadn't seen, you know, All Out Monster Attack and, and uh, you know, that, which is like unbelievable. <laughs> yes. Nice. Lots of rock in the shirt. Yep. But yeah, I, I just uh, was really excited. I remember being really excited when this one came out, being a little baffled by it, but also sort of applauding what it was going for. But yeah. I'm so glad that we have a chance to like revisit it. I started thinking about it like when this movie started wrapping up, I was like, you know, this movie is sort of in that same pantheon of like Batman and like what? these giant pop culture icons that you can copy the bones of it and yeah. then just put whatever meat you want on that skeleton. Like anything works. I just recently talked about this on the comics podcast because they, they're doing a comic book miniseries right now called Here There Be Monsters, which is Godzilla versus Pirates. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> and then meanwhile, you can put Godzilla in the far future. You yeah. can put Godzilla in space or whatever. And it always somehow works. It's like Predator. You right. can jump him in wherever and it works. It's that Batman thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. If you do an Elseworlds story and now Batman is in feudal Japan, mm -hmm. I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah, why the fuck not? <laughs> Who cares? Okay, I know, JT, you are a super fan of Godzilla, mm -hmm. so give me, like, the synopsis, like, the brief two-sentence. First time you busted to Godzilla. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Briefest rundown. I was in... K 
kindergarten or first grade or something. Oh, God damn it. What kind of <laughs> no, 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 no. Basically, this is my first experience with Godzilla. Basically, my dad, we got off the bus and my dad put on Godzilla versus Monster Zero. Hell yeah. Yeah. And uh, he didn't tell us that he bought the movie for us. He just put it on and we thought it was on TV. We walked in and we were just glued. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. Mm. So, ever since then, we've kept all of our VHS collection. Oh, I actually nice. just sent it to Moss yesterday. Yeah. It holds a warm place in my heart. It, it, it's, it, I love these movies so much. You've got your own internal vision. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gun to your head. Fuck, Mary kill. Godzilla, <laughs> Michael Myers. Or Mothra. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> or Raiden. Jesus. You say we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time. Boss, again, brief synopsis of your history. I was introduced to Godzilla by one of my friends on the playground. Have you heard about this Godzilla character? It's always nice to have a mutual friend. <laughs> yeah. And then I rented one of, I think I rented uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, yeah. which is one of my favorite classic Godzilla movies. And then I went with my grandparents and rented like every single Godzilla movie they had possible, mm-hmm. watched all of those in the one weekend. And I was like, oh yeah, this this is me. <laughs> this is me. Well, you're kind of kaiju level anyway. You're yeah. like, what, seven foot eight or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> He's a large man. A very large man. I am a large man. <laughs> Bally, what about you? Godzilla history? 98, baby! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, I own that fucking action figure. Do you own the plastic cups, too, <laughs> that they gave out? <laughs> yes. Of course. <laughs> I will say, the popcorn bucket wasn't nearly as fuckable as it could have been. Yeah. <laughs> Not like that Slimer one for the new Ghostbusters movie, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> you know this. About to be double Slimer, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the pop cussy. <laughs> About to get that onion head. <laughs> gonna be gooding in the theater to slime. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. God, I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> I'm wearing a suit <laughs> <laughs> all right well look i already could tell this episode is going to be it's you know jam-packed so why don't we jump over to the info dump about 2016's sheen godzilla mm-hmm So as I mentioned, the year is 2016. Go ahead and just get ready to to cue up the Snickers because I'm going to have to <laughs> laugh at myself about how I pronounce these names. But here we go, <clears throat> Hideaka Ano. Is that close, Nathan? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I think so yeah. Uh, Shinji Higuchi. I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you sure? I thought you were best friends with them. <laughs> the movie stars Hiroki Hasegawa, mm-hmm. Mikako Ichigawa. Uh huh. Sat- Why do I even bother doing this? Uh-huh. Satoma- Satomi Ishihara, Yutaka Takanaka. Nucci. You're doing great. King Kokora, Matsuo Satoro, Kazu Takahashi, and Kanji Suda. Mm-hmm. Thank God I got through it. Jesus Christ. And you got this from Roger Ebert. <laughs> <Not Tom. laughs> Shin Roger Ebert. Nathan, it's uh, Mayor Ebert. Mayor Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, when we eventually do 98, uh-huh. I can't wait for Bali to then talk about Shin Godzilla all Damn it. The die has been cast. <laughs> you got pegged. The budget was $15 million and it grossed $78 million worldwide, so a fucking banger of a hit Mm -hmm. it is currently on rotten tomatoes at an 86 percent and it won picture of the year at the 40th annual japan academy prize which is their equivalent to the oscars i believe Mm -hmm. picture of the year nothing to sneeze at no I'm going to avert watching the trailer for this because there is no dialogue in it, mm-hmm. so it would not be enjoyable for the listener, but it's a cool fucking trailer, so check it the fuck out. Truly, every movie should start with a Godzilla roar, mm-hmm. correct? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. agreed. Man, I love seeing that Toho production card. Mm-hmm. It never gets old. I love that it's dead silent, too. Like, it's just, it's a great fucking way to get into the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay, so again, my experience watching this movie, had no idea what I was in for, didn't watch the trailer. I knew, again, just the ad campaign. is like, this is the scariest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life (laughs) this movie starts and there's a boat in the tokyo bay that's just empty Mm -hmm. we're doing handheld footage going onto the boat and man between this and when we cut to the civilian life of like the people in the subways and stuff on handheld like is this cloverfield right i was like (laughs) why don't we just get another proper cloverfield movie just make another one just do the handheld thing it's been God, what is it now? Like 16 years? Hey, we got two. I know, but I'm, I miss the handheld nature of a kaiju attack. Like, that's a great that's a great idea for a movie. Wasn't one actually filmed and, like, just hasn't been released? I feel like I heard that there was one that was, like, in production. Who fucking knows? I remember after the first one came out, I believe it was Reeves and Abrams together said, you know, there is a possibility we could do a second movie around this same attack from a different perspective. Yeah. And they even pointed to, I can't remember the brother's name, but the guy that gets the tail whip down on the 
the bridge that dies. Mm -hmm. You can see people in the crowd filming on their cameras. We could see it from their perspectives. And like, they never fucking did that. And I'm like, that's a slam dunk of a setup. Like a kaiju attack from a camcorder perspective. Mm -hmm. Fucking do it. I mean, think about all the shit you could do now with it. Like with everyone's got cell phones in their fucking hands. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I I feel like it's a missed opportunity, but they'd probably just fucking release the movie in like 30 second bits on TikTok. They probably (laughs) Probably. would. Or it would be like the most fucking embarrassing shit ever. Like that Texas chainsaw from a couple years ago. This monster's about to be canceled, bro. Godzilla, you're going to get canceled. (laughs) It'd be Cloverfield V Chronicle. (laughs) Hey, if you get Max Landis out of there, I might be into that fucking idea. Not going to lie. But yeah, this opening scene is insane. We are at a breakneck pace of just like, Here's character introductions. Here's their job titles. And I even wrote down, I, like, I cannot game up. I am just hoping I don't have to remember anyone's names. It doesn't help that like, yeah, we go from the boat to the subway to then a tunnel where the ceiling collapses and blood rushes in. Yes. Like, <laughs> we're just like, what the fuck is happening? CGI goop just starts <laughs> pouring in from this fucking hole in this tunnel. Oh, I love goop. Oh, I'm a big fan of goop. It's a big goop movie. Very goopy movie. And when we're being introduced to ostensibly our lead characters, they're waiting for uh, seismic readings, Mm -hmm. casualty reports, everything requires something to be signed in triplicate before they do a goddamn thing. And, like, they seed that immediately. The best part is the literal, like, game of telephone (laughs) down the board meeting table. Oh, man. Even, like, later in the movie, whenever the the prime minister is like, okay, yes, I I approve of this strike. Yeah. We then have to see five people answer the phone and being like, okay, we're attacking. And also, (laughs) even in the same room, at the same table, there's the woman in charge of the SDF has to turn to the other (laughs) guys and say, we approve the attack. Like, we all know. We're all on speakerphone. Right. Right. But, like, we're even, like, talking about, okay, now we're on the third floor. And then we cut to another room. Now we're on the subtop. Now we're on the fifth floor of this building. Like, it is so fucking funny when you, like, when it clicks for you of, like, here's what we're doing for this hour and a half, two hour runtime. Mm -hmm. But, like, the editing of this shit is so fucking crazy. Not only with, like, the character introductions and everything, but, like, we're in the middle of this guy debriefing this conference room and on the phone there's been in this explosion and then we get a title card that says later yeah and then we cut back to the exact same fucking scene yeah in the <laughs> middle of the same speech and i was like all right i i'm fucking in i'm in on this movie <laughs> and they're taking so long that like we see a press conference where they're like we might have to ground flights mm-hmm. oh i'm sorry i've just been given a correction we are grounding all flights yeah. like- <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you intercut that with what's going on outside yes. it is so fucking funny because like are like, uh, we got to wait and see what the seismic reports say. And it just cuts to Godzilla's tail as he like moves through this Venice canal looking <laughs> river, like flipping yachts out of the way. The ocean is burning and there's a <laughs> giant pool of blood in the middle of the bay. And they're just like, I don't know. It might be a volcano. Yeah, it's a volcano. <laughs> we can't be bothered to go outside and look at it. Put your fucking phone away. <laughs> so here's the thing. I knew nothing about this movie. And when Godzilla's tail first comes out of the ocean, mm-hmm. I'm like, that doesn't look like Godzilla's tail. Right. Right. And then like, they're like, immediately, we got to blow this thing the fuck out of here. <laughs> we got to blow the fuck up. Yeah. And I was like, I was putting money. I was like, that's not Godzilla. Mm. I thought that was going to be the introduction, like how the Mutus get introduced in 2014. I was like, it's not Godzilla, right? Sure. And man, I, well, I'm going to save it till we get there because we're almost there. But that first reveal of Godzilla, <laughs> holy fucking shit. So at this point, yeah, they don't know what it is. So yeah. they're like, well, right now we're calling it the giant unidentified light form. We're going to talk to some experts. After we talk to those experts, then we'll hold another meeting to uh, to decide what to call it. Yeah. And then we will have another meeting to try to figure out how to fight it. Jesus Christ. They all eventually are like, okay, we got to blow this thing the fuck out of here. And they <laughs> right. go, the prime minister goes onto a press conference. And man, this shit is so fucking funny because they're like, Look, the weight of this creature, if that's just its tail, the weight of it, it will just collapse under its own feet if it tries to come ashore. There's nothing to worry about. Cut to this guy coming up on stage and whispering in his ear. And he's like, what? Oh, really? Already? Like he does like a spit take. <laughs> and then, man, okay. <laughs> Normally in a Godzilla movie, when Godzilla is introduced, like I'm thinking specifically of that 2014 one, sure. I, I know that's the American version, but whatever. There's always a tilt up, you know, from the feet up. Some kind of gravitas. Exactly. He gets a hero shot. Smash cut to. This cut to Godzilla. <laughs> He's no hero. It's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in a movie because there's no fanfare. <laughs> it cuts to. This big eyed chicken. <laughs> It is the funniest fucking 
fucking thing. It's like, take the Geico gecko, make him crawl around his belly, and give him googly eyes. And that's what this thing fucking looks like. <laughs> and people are losing their fucking minds, running I in terror. Too. Yeah, no, I would too. Yeah, you would too. But it was so fucking funny because I was like, that's not fucking Godzilla. Like, it's just <laughs> this big rubber chicken is shitting blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> The fucking, the gills on it just coming blood the whole fucking time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to wake up the whole house, so dude, I was laughing my fucking tits off. I was like, this isn't Godzilla. There's no, no way for this is fucking Godzilla. And when they explain what's happening, so if you haven't seen the movie, the whole point of this movie, is, as we've kind of briefly talked about, is like, what would it look like from the bureaucratic version of like trying to deal with a Godzilla attack? Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that, the traditional Godzilla story here is Godzilla comes out of the water as like- Literally comes <laughs> out of the water. He literally comes blood out of the ocean. God damn. But it's like- what would it look like if Godzilla evolved from like how kind of how humans did crawling out of the ocean, sprouting legs, learning to walk upright, like in real time, we're watching this thing evolve, but also changes depending on what has attacked it. You exactly. know, it, there's there's concept art from this movie that is fucking crazy. Right, like it, yeah. it, at one point, the plan was for him to sprout wings. Yeah, like some of the stuff they actually talk about, he would have done. Yeah, and go to space. Oh, yeah. He would have grown a second head. <laughs> yeah. And he was going to like have a universe created with it himself. Like, yeah. It was fucking book wild. Basically the Akira ending. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? The anime inspiration is not like unapparent. Yeah. It is very clear. But man, it's so fucking funny because like he's wiggling his way through the street and flipping cars around like they're fucking bath toys and shit. The shot before that where the cars are sort of like bunching up against each other, I think mm -hmm. is really well done. Mm -hmm. And there's a part where, like, he's trying to learn to, like, because if he just kind of just stops moving through multiple points of this movie, like, he just wiggles his way up and then just kind of just sits there with his mouth agape and his bug eyes. <laughs> it is so fucking funny. When he crawls up the building because it was just in his way. Dude, <laughs> when he crawls up that building and it cuts to inside the apartment yeah, and there's oh this God. woman and her little kid, like, sliding down, like, screaming to terror. <laughs> yeah, and then they're just like, Ugh. and he's just, like, wiggling up against it, trying to get her. <laughs> so scary. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. Just go around. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> My favorite shot in that first introduction of Godzilla is uh, the water running down the street. Yes. And there's just this one guy <laughs> running full speed. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> dude, he's booking it too, dude. He is running so fast. <laughs> he's like that extra in Avengers, yes. that woman in the striped shirt. That's just booking it. <laughs> I love that shot. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're cutting back to the boardroom and we're superimposing the forms that they have to sign in yeah. order to fight an unarmed creature yeah. like, <laughs> like that's the most exciting thing that can happen it's brilliant at this point i'm just sitting there thinking about like man what a tonal whiplash minus what is for this <laughs> fucking movie like, absolutely oh but yeah that's the first like 20 minutes of this movie like when godzilla first evolved <sighs> i was like i got it. i know where this movie's going now this is a brilliant setup mm -hmm. and like when it shows the aftermath like after godzilla like he he wiggles his way back into the water and disappears yeah and like they cut to our characters who again they kind of don't really matter even though we spend the majority of the movie with them the only thing we learn about them is what other characters tell us about them like yeah. at one point someone is literally like oh these two both like politics yeah. i bet they'll <laughs> fuck and then it like doesn't happen <laughs> like there is no character arc in this movie like everyone is completely one-dimensional they're all it is like fully the opposite of minus one exactly. where i'm just like i will fucking die for these characters yeah. i hope these two get to, like when i watched minus one i couldn't believe that most of my mo emotional investment in the movie was i hope these two kiss <laughs> like i hope these two get together i hope this uh woman with this strange baby that just showed up at this guy's house i hope they get together in there and then when she gets tail whipped or blasted away in that movie oh i'm like I, I broke down in the theater i was like no i did too i did <laughs> spoilers oh yeah spoilers for minus one but Eh, that's not the end of that movie. No. You'll, you'll see what happens. But you've had time. So yeah, when they're like cutting to the devastation, it's just yeah. them standing around and they're like, "Look what it did in only two hours. We had two hours and did nothing." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You're pretty much dead, <laughs> and they will learn pretty much nothing from that for the rest of the movie as well. Right. Like nobody learns anything. I don't think. I love the sort of warbly version of the classic Godzilla theme that mm -hmm. plays during the first evolution. Like he mm -hmm. hasn't earned his theme music yet. Yeah, he kind of dig. Well, speaking of music, this is where I wrote down and i used it in the intro where they get together all the different 
groups of people like the environmentalists and the nerds and like that. And <laughs> like nerds. Okay, we're gonna come up with a game plan, and it it plays like a black exploitation movie mixed with like the intro to a local news station. Like that's the music <laughs> that plays when they're like gathering around everybody. It's like the weird the like jazz music and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's so sick. Uh, yeah, I wrote down the Cowboy Bebop score. It is a Cowboy <laughs> Bebop score. Exactly. <laughs> Have you noticed like during the uh, talking of like the red tape and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. It seems like. The movie was like, wait, people may not understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then there's always a character that would say something that is plain as day. Yes. It's like, okay, uh, yeah, so-and-so with his cells and blah, blah, blah. And then someone's like, what does that mean? Oh, this plan may still work. Or like, we can kill it or (laughs) something. And we're just like, oh, okay. So, what do all these trails mean? Well, radiation is bad. So, if you stand there, you get sick. And then (laughs) me as the the viewer, I'm like, oh, yeah, radiation is bad. I heard. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you, Agashira. When they show the guy looking at the radiation spreading, he's like, oh, it's getting bad. I'm like, no shit. And like, this is not a complaint, but sounds like you're about to complain <laughs> when they reboot characters like like Batman sure. or like for some reason, they keep trying to do it with King Arthur. Like <laughs> people will always inevitably roll their eyes like, oh, OK, we're getting another one of these. But like when Japan does it, it's and they constantly do it with Godzilla. Everyone's like, fuck, yeah, keep mm-hmm. it coming. Like almost every Godzilla movie for the last 20 years has stood on its own, exactly. which I, I, I think is admirable. They just Absolutely. keep trying to, like they don't but they don't retread it. I feel like the listeners need to know that Nathan has lost his jacket yeah. Yeah. and his glasses. I was going to bring it up. This but man is getting casual. Yeah, yeah. Now we're getting down to business. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting down to business. And well, right now, yeah, it's been a couple days uh, into the Godzilla attack. You know, I got to <laughs> relax a little bit. Change your shirt. It kind of smells right. I love- <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I love that we're that they're putting together this task force of weirdos. And meanwhile, we're told off screen, America is just fucking shit up off screen. Yeah. <laughs> they took all these samples from the creature and the Americans burned them because they smell bad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> typical americans i think that was an actual line or something like that seems yeah. pretty on par but i also think it's funny because like the whole time they're going over like okay w- you're gonna be doing this and you're gonna be doing this like trying to figure out what the next step of the plan is mm-hmm. and then like the minute they come to a conclusion it cuts to like the general public already knows this like right yeah. <laughs> fully highlights how useless all of this fucking shit like I mean, we we see them scroll through twitter mm-hmm. and they're like oh no everybody knows about the monster <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good (laughs) and then we get introduced to this character who is a american ambassador to japan who is a japanese woman kayoko and i fucking love kayoko she's great dude she's so sick she comes in ball swinging like ah we know what we're fucking doing here and then when she suddenly switched to english it was so fucking funny dude every time she suddenly starts speaking english it throws me off but it is so fucking funny yeah and she's like look the boat that you guys found at the opening scene of the movie Mm -hmm. that was the boat of this scientist who knew the shit was coming Mm -hmm. and he left this cryptic way of explaining how to defeat Godzilla and at this point I think that is when they named Godzilla yeah which I thought was a great little scene because it really they break down the etymology of it like Mm -hmm. Godzilla means God incarnate like that's metal as hell Mm -hmm. there's a great fucking scene he also left a little origami crane an origami crane that we'll talk about yeah well in his notes he mentions Gojira Gojira. and they're like the DOE is called a Godzilla because it needs something like a little snappy branding it needs branding yeah and so like they're exchanging information and so at this point Godzilla is started to come back ashore Mm -hmm. and his tail for some reason in this movie is twice as big as his body which I thought was so fucking funny it's so fucking long but he's just like rampaging on his way to Tokyo some of us live like that I don't know what to tell you (laughs) And at this point, he kind of looks like Lord Zed from Power Rangers. Like, he is mostly blood with, like, a little bit of a skeleton in between. Yeah. And he kind of starts to look like the Godzilla we know at this point. Real but craggy. Exactly. We're going to launch a full-out assault in this guy. We're going to do fighter jets and tanks and everything. And it starts to reveal that Godzilla has evolved to the point where he automatically intercepts incoming attacks. Yeah. So, all these things. He's got basically got a force field around himself. When those missiles hit him and just went clink (laughs) (laughs) they unload fighter jets like with uh you know bullets on them they have tanks offshore shooting rockets at them Mm -hmm. and like the best part is during this whole thing Godzilla just sits there like mouth agape just stands there frozen (laughs) he's like huh Huh? Godzilla (laughs) for most of the movie is just kind of vibing yeah which I I appreciate yeah he has no real agenda it seems like and this is his fourth form right that we're talking yeah this is a millennials Godzilla yeah 
<laughs> it just sits there going, huh? Huh? <laughs> like, the dichotomy between this Godzilla versus every other one. Because, yeah. like, he doesn't have an agenda. He doesn't really roar that much. He kind of is just like... So what are you guys up to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's just hey, like, say what you will, but 98 Zilla fucking moves. Yeah, he son. does. He sure does. He moves so fast, they lose him on radar. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> minus one Godzilla is, like, fully pissed off the entire movie. Like, yeah. Godzilla, minus one Godzilla wants to hurt people. Yeah, exactly. kind of wild. <laughs> no, I just love that shit Godzilla. Is just, it's literally just, for most of the movie, mm-hmm. when he's on screen, he's just standing there. He's yeah. not doing anything. He's not looking around. He just kind of mouth agape. Just like he, like he walked into a room and forgot what he was going in there for. Like, That's <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, they, they drop all this shit out of it. Doesn't do anything. And then like he does start to move again. And man, he flips an entire bridge. Yeah. Just flips it up and it lands on this tank of guy. Like that's basically video village. If they were filming this, they just right. got a bridge collapsed on him. And this is just not what I was expecting from a Godzilla movie, but I was so fucking in at this point. I was like, it does not fucking matter. And then it does have these like kind of every once in a while, a, a sort of inspirational moment, right? Like yeah. I love that it cuts to the the military captain when he says like the offense isn't the only way to protect people. And right. Meanwhile, best offense is a good defense, baby. Exactly. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a shot of a protest where people are chanting, you know, Godzilla is God. Yeah. Protect yeah. Godzilla. <laughs> exactly. But, like, there is some great moments, too, in terms of just visuals that really lean into the horror of, like, yeah, this seems goofy from, like, the outsider's perspective, but yeah. in there, when, like, the black cloud of, like, ash emerge, like, wipes away after they've dropped all these bombs and shit on him, oh. and it's just Godzilla's face, yeah. unscathed, looking like a goddamn demon with his blackened eyes, it is fucking <laughs> so scary. <laughs> yeah, dude, his, like, jagged teeth and stuff. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. The shot that gets me is the one, like, Circuit City employee, oh. right? himself when the power <laughs> okay. goes out i want you all to remember that because we're going to come back to that guy later on in the episode but yeah <laughs> okay. no, that seems fucking great and then like they're talking about we got to evacuate all these because there comes a point when they have the option before godzilla evolves to this point to blow them away with the fighter jets yeah and they think they've evacuated this city but there's one guy <laughs> and his kid walking across the train track and right. they're like look if we kill godzilla right here the fallout will be catastrophic so we can't risk anybody getting hurt right and so they call off the attack and then like at this point they're like okay we really have to get people the fuck out of the city before we do anything and it cuts to like everyone down in the subways jamming themselves in a subway train and i'm like i don't know man if a cthulhu level god creature <laughs> that is unaffected by military firepower is just stomping around above ground i think the subway train is the last place i'd want to fucking be I, right i don't want to be underground i think that was a last minute decision because sure. the u.s is coming again we we're yes. just like fuck it we're bombing it sure that's what i was gonna say the u.s sends over a map of its proposed bombing area and it's all of Tokyo. (laughs) (laughs) They had a secret agenda, let's be honest. Well, they took Kyoto off the map because, you know, the military general's wife and him honeymoon there. (laughs) Jeez. Hey, listen, back-to-back World War champs, don't question it. (laughs) Mm. So, this is where we get the atomic breath scene. Oh, God. This shit, man, this is the shit I live for because it shows Godzilla bright red against the smoke-filled night sky of Tokyo. The camera ramps down his tail and it's turning from purple to white. His eyes turn silver. Oh my God. The silver eyes was so fucking cool. But like the people are running away and our lead, lead character turns around. And he's like, Godzilla's, what's he doing? And it cuts to the prime minister and, the, and this military guy. Be like, Yeah, they're getting in a helicopter. They're getting in a helicopter specifically. <laughs> and they're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. And like, well, Godzilla's tail's charging up. And he's like, for what? And man, this atomic breath scene is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen in the Godzilla movie. Yeah. Because... It's so funny because it even surprises him. He's like, whoa, what the fuck is that? And then even the music, like there's no music yes. except for this opera. When the fucking mandibles oh split open. God, like, I was not prepared for that. His mouth alone is so fucking scary in this movie because yeah. it's the jagged teeth. And then like his mouth is just, I mean, I know it sounds funny to say, but it's just muscles yeah. and tendons. Like on both sides of it, you see everything. And yeah, his mouth splits open and it goes from black ash smoke yeah. to regular fire to purple fire. Hyper beam. Yeah. yeah. It's like. <laughs> Like an arc. Dude, the ultra wide shot where Godzilla is tiny on the screen and you just see a fire trail mm-hmm. flood through. It's like it's like the bomb in Terminator 2. It is, but it's also <laughs> a shot right out of Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind. Mm-hmm. Like the there was like some 
insane explosions in that. Oh yes, of course. The movie I was talking about <laughs> earlier, in case you were paying attention. <laughs> But like, it's just when they show the fire go rampage through the streets and cars are just getting belong like across football fields. It was so fucking funny. Dude. Yeah. It's like the scale of this Godzilla and what the devastation can do is so fucking crazy. And then like the helicopter starts taking off with the prime minister, a bunch of his people on it. <laughs> and like he shoots laser beams out of his back that just cuts buildings in half, mm-hmm. blows that helicopter the fuck out of the sky. Like it's a fucking design, dude. It is fucking sick. Well, Godzilla, he somehow realized that they're going to drop more bombs on him and then decided, well, I'm going to shoot these things out of my back now. Mm-hmm. and I'm going to blow my back out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it, it, it seems involuntary. He's just like, oh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like he sneeze. <laughs> he just sneezes. <laughs> yeah, he sneezes and like fire burst out and destroys an entire city. Like, it is so fucking funny. And then he shoots it out of his tail, yeah. his dorsal fins, his mouth. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's nuts. It's crazy, dude. I think there's like a really cool technique that they use because mm-hmm. they've been using the lower thirds. Mm-hmm. It's kind of been like a way to desensitize the audience. Mm-hmm. And then when the destruction is happening, it cuts to each ward in yep. Tokyo yep. and it's just all completely destroyed. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, so that's why they kept doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a horrible postcard moment. Yeah. It'll, it'll even say shit like Tokyo whatever ward post Godzilla destruction or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they throw in the little tags on it. Yeah. But then there's a shot where it shows Godzilla than just a wall of flame behind him. Yeah. Like you see him like face on and that shot is so good. Uh, and so after this, they're like, who's the next in charge to become the prime minister? Because he's fucking dead. His next in line of succession is dead. Right. And they find this older guy who was like, I think like the head of the agriculture or something like that. And he's pissed off because his ramen's gotten soggy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Under fucking standable, honestly. Absolutely. Wait, keep in mind, Godzilla powered down. Yeah. He powered down, but he just sits there. He just sits there frozen in place mm-hmm. for the majority of the rest of the movie. For 15 days, yeah. they have yeah. two <laughs> weeks to not get anything done. And so- <laughs> (laughs) This is where off screen the UN has met and they're like, look, we got to do something about this Godzilla guy. This Godzilla guy. (laughs) Look, he's the scariest fucking guy I've seen in my life. (laughs) We are going to drop a nuke on Japan if they can't get their shit together. We are Mm going to drop a nuke on Godzilla. We want to so bad. (laughs) Oh, we really want to drop this nuke. Oh, (laughs) we're edging with the nukes. (laughs) This is where it really plays into what minus one will become Mm -hmm. because the rest of this movie gets deadly serious in terms of like what this means. And this is where I love that movie flips its tone because it's like okay look it seems like nothing right it seems like the next logical step is we got to drop a nuke on Godzilla but Mm -hmm. that's coming from the American perspective and even so they say that in the movie this is what the Americans want to do yeah baby and then (laughs) the Japanese are like we cannot drop another nuke on Japan. Not only <laughs> the fuck we can. Not only can <laughs> we have another nuke drop on us from another country, we can't do it to ourselves because we've rebuilt ourselves from scrap. Like right. that was the Japanese motto. It's like scrap and rebuild. Right. Like we finally have gotten to a place where Tokyo is put back together. We've rebuilt from the scraps. And not only if a nuke is dropped on us, will that completely wipe us out? We'll never recover. We'll never recover. Our culture will be gone and we'll be doing it to ourselves. And it's- we're told that the bomb. Um, I mean, it's been <laughs> decades, so bombs have gotten worse. Way worse. You know, this bomb is going to be 75% more powerful than the one dropped in Hiroshima. Exactly. Yeah. And the movie kind of grinds to a halt in terms of pacing, which I really did like, because mm. up to this point, it is breakneck. Right. We are on fast forward. It's one scene after another of people saying, look, there's a plan. We have to obey the plan. It's it's showing you all the places where the plan could have been stopped. Yeah. And it's just not. Yeah. And so I think it's even Kayoko who comes to uh, our lead character and says, this is what the U.S. says. They says, using our nuclear wisdom is the only road to salvation for mankind. Nuclear wisdom is a wild line. Two words that should not go together. No. Absolutely. And then so we're going to give Godzilla a dosage of some type of poison internally that will freeze him in place. Mm-hmm. The silica packets. <laughs> silica packets, exactly. <laughs> They're trying to do the T-1000 plan from the inside. Right. Like we'll freeze him from the inside and then we're good, right? This is when 80s hair metal guitar starts playing. Oh, yeah. They're like loading up all the blood coagulant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that shit was so rad, though. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's Kyoko, which he's on the private jet with. And again, we don't see him from like the neck up, mm-hmm. but like... Like, they're on the plane with uh, some military strategist in the U.S. This movie 
movie acts like we're supposed to know. Oh, Custler, our old friend. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> she says to him, I believe, I think it's her saying that to him. She says, I won't see a third bomb dropped on the country of my mother who lived through it. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what American productions of Godzilla always fail to recognize. Yeah. Because Godzilla does not belong to us. And anytime we try to adapt him, we fundamentally misunderstand what that character represents. The shared generational trauma that exactly. the character's built on. Yeah. Godzilla's initial incarnation was a response to World War II. Like, it's a response to... A decade out yes. from World War II. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was very prescient. And our Godzilla doesn't represent fucking anything. Like, yeah. literally nothing. It's just like, ah, big guy, go boob. Like, yeah. That's what our Godzilla is. <laughs> Thunder thighs. Exactly. Okay, well, now we're just body shaming for no fucking reason. <laughs> yeah, and if you... Listen, if you want to talk about thighs, this shin Godzilla is pretty thick, too, okay? He's got thick shins. Oh, he's a thick boy. <laughs> God damn it. He is a thick boy. But, like... This is where I wanted Cloverfield to take off because I wanted us to have our own version of Godzilla. Sure. And to represent something, even though Cloverfield doesn't represent fucking anything either. But I still think we can do that. I still think we can come up with a Kaiju of our own. Yeah. I mean, I I guess King Kong is kind of ours, Mm -hmm. but like, even then... I don't know. What does Kong represent? Monkeys. <laughs> do we need to nuke ourselves before we can? Yeah. Do we need to get nuked for this to happen, Dustin? Like, what are you asking here? I guess this is a call to arms is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let's, let's get out there. And let's get out there. <laughs> I think FBI busts down Nathan's door. I think Kong represents, if anything, maybe our attempt to control Mother Nature. Maybe yeah. that's the closest thing you could say about it. But like, I never was a King Kong fan. Like, mm. I've never been interested. I, the movies are fine. Kong Skull Island was okay. Okay, I think Skull Island fucks. Yeah, <laughs> I think it rips, dude. I think the best part of Kong Skull Island is Shea Wiggum getting needlessly tail whipped into a mountain. Like, that's the only part of the movie I really dug. That's <laughs> uh, the best. But I do love that while the first hour and a half of this movie was the breakneck pace, that now we find those good moments to really settle into these characters. Because mm-hmm. up to this point, again, these characters don't mean anything. They're kind of interchangeable for the most part. Right. And this is where we have that self-reflection on stuff. And so the whole time this is happening, again, we've got 15 days. We see it you know play out throughout the days and Godzilla just sitting there just chilling Mm -hmm. and it comes down to like the last day and like they're freaking out we are we don't know if we're gonna have enough time we don't know if we have enough resources and like France of all people have called in and said we gotta postpone dropping the nuke on Godzilla for like a couple hours (laughs) fucking France (laughs) the smash cut to all of the Japanese officials just bowing to the French dignitaries yeah (laughs) we also learn around here Professor Maki hated radioactivity after what happened to his wife yeah Yeah, that's the doctor that went missing from the boat Mm -hmm. and they find out his plans that he left that they finally decrypted were what exactly I think I missed this part he basically had plotted out Godzilla's cellular makeup and right. how he's able to they sort of use that information to determine what they already knew yeah. it just kind of comes out to oh yeah maybe our plan will work yeah. because we've we've seen this research but he also organized it where it couldn't be read unless you folded it into origami yeah. <laughs> origami yes exactly and so I thought like okay our plan is in motion now so what their plan is is we're gonna lure Godzilla in well he's kind of already lured at this point he's kind of just sitting there mm. there's one day left right one day left before Godzilla wakes back up well they, they think yeah or they're gonna drop the nuke on him either way yeah they're just like our energy readings indicate he'll wake up in 15 days and we're just like <laughs> I hope that's right the exact day a nuke will be dropped on him <laughs> we've been wrong about everything before Ever. good thing no one forgot to carry the fucking one over Jesus <laughs> and so they both Blow up these buildings around Godzilla to like wake him up. That shit rules. And the buildings are just collapsing on top of him, whatever. The train bombs. Dude, the bullet trains coming in. This was so fucking cool, dude. And this like, was so ra- cool. he literally yells, <laughs> deploy all train bombs. Yeah. And then like, the trains are just ramping up Godzilla and exploding in his face Fuck and yeah. shit. That shit is so red. And like, he collapses to the ground. And while he's on the ground, like trying to recover, they send in a bunch of trucks with these tanks on them. Donald Trump would jerk off on all of these fucking trucks, like driving over. <laughs> God damn. They shoot coagula into Godzilla. They only get about like 20% in. And then he wakes up and just destroys every single one of these fucking trucks. He wakes up with his head on the ground. And he's just like, yeah, just sort of like vomits <laughs> at like lasers at them. It's like uh, Apollo Creed when he wakes up in the middle of the ring at that first one. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> 
he destroys the entire team of trucks. And yeah. They're like, okay, well, we'll send in a second wave. And then they, they get Godzilla back down again. They inject him with this coagulate. And like, it works. They like, announce the target's skin appears to be stiffening. And yeah. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, this is like how, uh, you know, Liu Kang beat Sub-Zero. It's the essence of life. Yeah. <laughs> they shoot a couple loads into Godzilla <laughs> and he freezes in place. Man, I do not care for the phrasing you're using. <laughs> Wait, which movie do I <laughs> Matthew Broderick would fucking never. I feel like Nelly is so upset this isn't 98, right? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say really upset. Yeah, he's not that upset. <laughs> But, like, it's so funny because Godzilla, like, they, they fill him up. God <laughs> damn it. There's no other way to say it. He's busting at the seams. <laughs> this is where I wrote down more like Cold Jira. <laughs> and so it's so funny because he starts moving again like he's going on another tag, and then he instantly fucking freezes. Like, yeah. he, like the whole time during this climax, I'm like, this seems like a little kid. I know. I, I chose that word specifically. The whole time they're doing this, it seems like a little kid playing with his figurines, right? Because, like, mm-hmm. the train's ramping up against Godzilla and the little trucks coming in with the tanks. Like, it feels... Oh, so Andy walked in. Mm-hmm. at that point right <laughs> and he walked in and he just froze up <laughs> exactly and it's also very brazen of an attack because like they are on the rooftops watching this because they're trying to drop drones on godzilla too to like get his attention and his laser back is just like cutting these drones in half before they can even get there the plan is basically like keep shooting him until he runs out of back juice exactly <laughs> like make him drain his back juice out and i'm like you guys are on the roof these beams are whipping around wildly cutting buildings in half but that's such a cool shot though yeah, it's like, a cool just, shot, like, but i'm like it doesn't, doesn't make sense that's the only reason why they did that <laughs> no i'm it's fine but it's funny to think like oops they, they actually cut everybody on that building in half meanwhile <laughs> all the other people that we've met so far is safely in a building watching this on a screen yeah so yeah we know it could have been done from inside but it was cooler <laughs> if they were outside absolutely there's also a weird stock footage shot of a boat launching a missile that i was just like you, you didn't have that yeah. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do that. Uh, th- this movie's got some crazy shots. There's like GoPros trapped to the sides of cars yeah. running down tunnels and shit. It's fucking wild. But like they freeze Godzilla and they're like, it came down to like the last two hours. Like mm-hmm. they showed the countdown. Like we almost, you know, had a fucking problem on our hands and they saved the day. And the final shot of this movie is haunting mm-hmm. because it's dead silent. It's like Godzilla frozen in place. Well, they also brought up that they didn't defeat Godzilla. Yeah. They just froze him. They just froze him. And they said that if he moves again, the U.S. will continue to nuke. Yeah. So y'all got to figure it out. Yeah. Which I thought was a very interesting concept and not like, uh, oh, he's dead. We yeah. saved the world. No, he, he literally says we have to learn how to coexist with Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a limited amount of time. That's a baller fucking lie, too, by the yeah. way. But like, it shows Godzilla frozen in place. And the final shot of this movie is dead silent, tilting up the camera up from him. And you see the edge of his tail. Ugh. And his tail is composed of what basically looks like xenomorph sprouting out of it. Fucking demons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like little humanoid Godzillas. Because they talked about early in the movie, like potentially, dude. It was a one liner too, yeah. and like I didn't catch this the first time I saw it. Yeah, and I was all like, "What the fuck does that ending mean?" They talk about it. It's when they're discussing his potential evolutionary stages. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Look, at some point, like the Cloverfield monster, honestly, he could sprout out little versions of himself. He could shrink. He yeah. could grow wings. Yeah. He could, yeah. And like, if it gets to that point, we're fucked. Like, we won't be able to stop Godzilla at all. Right. And and the implication." here is that you know an army fought him mm-hmm. and stopped him so he's gonna make an army when he wakes up exactly yeah. so not only did we not kill godzilla but we just froze him in place who knows what the next you know steps are gonna be like what if he wakes up again right but also if he does wake up and his tail does come to life and all these little versions of godzilla sprout out like mm-hmm. we're, we're fucked yeah. <laughs> yeah the world is done dude i would like that movie though yeah if the same team did it yeah, yeah. oh yeah no i wouldn't want like you know like baby xenomorphs running around like in that uh alien covenant yeah i don't want that <laughs> and as long as it has that some 41 song from godzilla final wars yeah. <laughs> yeah. jesus christ just happened to be fighting zilla from 98 yes <laughs> let's fucking go boys what if that's the next stage of evolution mm-hmm. yeah. i guess speaking of 98 we'll also talk about the ending of 98 sure. so uh madison square garden mm-hmm. got a bunch of little baby eggs in there right yeah, and a yeah. couple of them are sprouting open and they just fucking murder them yeah this movie's all over for animal cruelty. Mm-hmm. Godzilla 98 has the same ending as the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> yeah. 
and Nathan, and they're both fucking awesome. Have you seen that video? I think it's a TikTok video, but it's a guy be like, guys, when I open my door, it sounds like Yoshi. And it like the guy opens the door and goes, hey, I'm the fucking green dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh so that's 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 shit talk, y'all. <laughs> that's Shin Godzilla. Uh, did we uh did we miss anything? Anyone have any extra notes or anything? I just wanted to talk about some of the shots that are in it. Yeah. Fine. So uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> one of my favorite things that they do in the movie, they'll have them moving at like a breakneck pace, the cameras moving every when they're discussing the plan mm-hmm. but then as soon as they go into like a meeting or something locked off camera close mm-hmm. up and then any shot of like people running is locked off and it's just focused on them running right yeah. and the only shots that you get of like the helicopter shots of him mm-hmm. and he's completely stationary <laughs> during those shots yeah it's complete reversal <laughs> yeah it plays to ex- expectations of what camera movement means in movies yeah, yeah. And I think that that's such a cool shot, like especially with uh, what we had talked about earlier with the employee inside the electronics store mm-hmm. and the lights just go out. Yes. Such a cool shot, man. That straight up looks like it's from a security camera at first. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're just like living in this world mm-hmm. that the movie has created. Mm-hmm. In the same scene, you've got those shots of like everyone screaming when the lights go out in the tunnels as yes. well. That just like, yeah, it feels like I'm not supposed to be looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> I also wish I. You could read Japanese just to see what that Twitter feed looked like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was people just ridiculing the fucking government. I'm sure yeah. that's what it was. It's like very voyeuristic. Yeah. I think would be like a great way to describe it. Well, that mother and her daughter in that apartment building oh where they're like, God. they're clearly about to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess they're sliding back in that apartment like, I was like, oh my god. And then it cuts to the goofiest shot ever yes. of him just whoop, 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 like across the fucking building. <laughs> He's trying to skedaddle at that building. Like, it's <laughs> fucking wild, because, like, it does look goofy, yeah. but then, like, you take a step back from it, and you're like, Oh, actually, like, that would be, like, the scariest fucking thing I'd ever see in my life. Absolutely. (laughs) That's the brilliance of it, right? Because, like, every time you do a monster movie, it's always, let's make the monster the scariest fucking thing we can make it look. And then this movie's like, let's do the opposite. Let's make this thing goofy as fuck look. (laughs) It almost feels like a challenge that they took on because the older Godzilla films, especially the ones where he's, like, the hero, he has those big googly eyes. And it almost felt like they were like, we're going to use that design, but still make it scary. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think just the the mouth agape the whole time with the rows of jagged teeth yeah Mm -hmm. counterbalance like the goofy wide-eyed fucking stare the whole time and like the fact that he's me yeah yeah exactly (laughs) so this is the halloween four of (laughs) godzilla movies (laughs) then like godzilla's design for me like harkens back to godzilla versus destroyer yeah where he's in his burning godzilla form Mm -hmm. oh god yeah and it's like in that movie that's like a big moment Mm -hmm. like he's earned this like he's the hero of that movie yeah and in this he's like the worst terror that could ever be put on this earth yeah and to use the i mean it's not the exact same design or anything but like there's definitely elements of that to it oh yeah which is like the red like in between his skin yeah. whatever if you want to call it skin i don't know <laughs> he's like steaming <laughs> yeah. for the movie i hope there's a reappraisal of this movie now that minus one has gotten such glorified and well-deserved acclaimed i hope people go back and look at this one i think there is i yeah. think people are are going back to this one now i hope this episode at least gets people to go back and look at it too because it's an interesting take on godzilla i would love to see even if it's not a direct sequel i would love to see this team make another godzilla movie it doesn't have to be a complete satire but i feel like they've got the juice to make something interesting like a jet jaguar movie oh (laughs) Oh, man hell yeah was there any final final wars any final wars about (laughs) this Uh, it rips. I'm so glad you guys dug it because it's it is such a divisive picture, and it's my thoughts on it change every time I watch it. But I really, I really enjoyed this revisit. Yeah, I, I saved telling you guys off mic how I felt about this movie until this episode because I wanted there to be a little bit of like a surprise. Yeah, because I can certainly see people not fucking with this movie for sure. sure if you're expecting a base Godzilla movie, but it's like malignant. It is rewarding <laughs> when you fucking like line up with the frequency of it. Totally. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we jump over to Prop Cop? And if you're new to the show, Prop Cop is where we're going to look at all of the props in Shin Godzilla, and each of us are going to cop one prop for ourselves. Mally, I'll even let you take a prop from 98 if you really want to. Oh, but uh, <laughs> Nathan, this is your pick. Why don't you go ahead and go first? What prop do you want? I really dig the origami uh, readout. Yeah. I just want that, uh, like hanging in the office. Sure, sure. JT, what about you? I'll take the origami crane from the boat in the intro. There oh, you go. All right. The origami brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Moss, what about you? 
the bullet trains with bombs on them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't like the implication there, but uh, you know that's fine. I'll let you have that. They're animated. It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want the file. I really was gonna go with <laughs> with the uh, environmentalist pink towel that he wears around his <laughs> neck the whole movie yeah yeah hey uh what's that jt's clips you get on your computer you asked me to pull a bunch of fucking clips oh yeah okay <laughs> i want you if you're gonna do that or not yeah i pulled them because you asked me to i have no idea what they have in context of this but let me get through my fucking prop here hold on <laughs> god <laughs> sorry i'm in the middle of talking here i forgot i sent them i was like why is jt's <laughs> clips there you pulled a bunch of clips from <laughs> older godzilla movies yeah <laughs> anyway i decided to go with our lead character yaguchi at one point when he's having to make the decision about postponing the attack on Godzilla to try this plan on. He's sitting in front of this painting mm-hmm. and it's just a painting of like a bunch of mountains and then like a bunch of helicopters going yeah. by. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I was like, this looks like some apocalypse now, but in Japan type shit. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I want that painting. Mally, what prop do you want? I'll take Kong's axe. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. yeah. I thought you were going to go with a mountain of fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JT, what are these clips that you had me pull? So the goal of this was to be like, hey, let's watch the trailer. So anyway, like, subscribe, follow (laughs) us on uh, fucking the shit, and uh, see you next time. We thought it'd be funny if it was like, all right, so here's the trailer to Shin Godzilla, and then Dustin plays one of these. Oh. Yeah. Great bit. <laughs> Look, man. Play all three. You know what? Fuck it. We're here. Might as well play them. I can't make fun of it. I wore a suit for a podcast <laughs> recording. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's play these clips. See, now you're making it like it's too much of a thing. Let's just cut yeah, it Yeah, no, off. no, no. We're here. We're here. We're fucking doing it. No. Fuck you, JT. We're committing to this. <laughs> no, I want to watch the dropkick scene because it makes me happy. It's so good. Yeah. That's Jet Jaguar, if you're wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Megalon. <laughs> Look at this boy. I love it so much. I love the fist pump he does. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then the man straight up moonwalks. Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Good. Do they shake hands after this actually? Mm-hmm. They just run that same shot back, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> Dustin, it was a different time. This man said, let me run it back. Oh, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm fucking in for it. Okay, so there's one. We'll go ahead and jump over to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, I know this is incredible for you, but keep hanging in there. We're almost through it. So Godzilla just did a flying drop kick. You've probably seen that clip. <laughs> fucking twice. Godzilla's shooting. <laughs> oh, right. He flies with his atomic breath. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing it he runs out of fire and now it's just air how does he know where he's going why is that thing thing in right there <laughs> all right here's the last one hell yeah <laughs> doing his little dance brings a tear to the eye look at that little guy good for him guys those movies are so charming all right great bit jt anyway <laughs> let's talk about thanks Let's talk about bit part. Is this an episode of Great Bits? This is an episode of Great Bits. I wish I had a theme song for it. <laughs> but uh, bit part is where we're going to put ourselves in the movie retroactively. Mm-hmm. We're going to take someone else's job <laughs> and we're going to be their part in the movie. And I'm going to go ahead and go first because we talked about it earlier. But I want to be that guy alone in the electronics store <laughs> watching that press conference on TV right before Godzilla inadvertently cuts the power to my store. So good. JT, who do you want to be in this movie? In the tower collapse scene in the beginning, there's mm-hmm. this couple that's like, oh, cool, a slide. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be that dude. Sure, sure. Moss, what about you? I would like to be the person who interrupts the press conference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a real, like, George W. Bush yeah, yeah. Uh, 9-11 moment. <laughs> Second Godzilla, Godzilla has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> that was my backup, so I'm glad someone took that. That's really good. Nathan? I can't recall if this is in the subtitled version, but mm. when they're heading down into the subway, someone off screen yells, this place is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like very, very weird. Like you've never been to the subway before. That was in the sub version. I heard that. Yeah. Awesome. And then Mally, who do you want to be a 98? I would just want to be like one of Charles dances, like random dudes that gets fucking wrecked when Ghidorah gets released. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, we're going moving over to that movie. Yeah. yeah. The monsters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just so we're clear, Mally has covered three different Godzilla movies. <laughs> this is, might be the most research he's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I fuck with King of the Monsters hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, too. That movie fucking rules. They discover Atlantis and nobody cares, which care. makes me I laugh don't really care. hard. I know. I don't care. <laughs> That's one I need to revisit. Well, we're going to talk about it. The silver lining mm. to Shin Godzilla. <laughs> I can go ahead and go first. I'll say, look, man, we stopped Godzilla once. We can probably do it again. Nice. There, there you go. That's all I got. 
Nathan, what do you got? Presuming Godzilla does stay asleep, the radioactivity, the half-life is not as bad as they thought it was originally. So Tokyo could rebuild in theory. Sure, sure. A lot of caveats there. <laughs> uh-huh. JT, what do you got? See, I don't know if you took mine or not, but essentially that Japan doesn't have to get nuked again. Mm. That was my backup. Yeah. Japan won't get bombed for a third time. <laughs> Moss, what about you? I was pretty excited that the U.S. didn't have to commit another war crime. <laughs> sure. That's good. Sure. Mally, what's your uh, silver lining for 98 or whatever movie you're going to pick here? I mean, you know, King Caesar gets to return to his resting place. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going over to a completely different franchise. I like it. No, no that's, that's also, also Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. What? Yeah. I thought he was talking about War for the Planet of the Apes. No. <laughs> no. What? Get your head out of your ass. <laughs> I mean, Caesar does go back to his resting place in that movie. It's true. (laughs) You should Google King Caesar after this. Google it and jerk off. (laughs) Google King Caesar feet. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He's actually my favorite kaiju other than Godzilla. Hell, yeah. All right. Well, let's say this. Let's say you see the end of shit, Godzilla. It's the scariest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life. (laughs) Why does it make me laugh every time? (laughs) What's the movie? People should watch after they watch Shin Godzilla. What's mm. a good double feature, a good pairing? I mean, minus one. Yeah. Okay. I was going to give an order here, but sure, <laughs> minus one. No, yeah. because someone else would say it. Well, <laughs> minus one off the table. Does anyone- JT just coming in hot with the bits. I yeah. know, I know. Not bad for someone who's never seen a Godzilla movie before <laughs> this. Anyone have a recommendation other than minus one? Yeah, I would recommend last year's film from the same director, Shin Kamen Rider, oh. which is a reinterpretation of the Masked Rider series. That's It's like the most violent Sentai show I've ever seen in my life. All right. He punches dudes' heads off. It's a lot of fun. It's really ridiculous. All right. Yeah. I'm going to suggest another Godzilla movie mm-hmm. that utilizes the horror aspects of Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Godzilla versus Mothra King Ghidorah, all out attack. Hell yeah. I actually think that Godzilla is scarier. Yeah, I agree. All right. JT, what are you watching? Oh, I said minus one. <sighs> you got to take the fucking easy answer. Of mm-hmm. course you do. Mally, what are you watching after 98? Oh, oh. okay. Sorry. Godzilla <laughs> 98. Oh, sorry, Mally. <laughs> Mally, what are you watching? I'm going to go with the 1996 miniseries, The Beast. All right. <laughs> starring William <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> All right. Wait, what the fuck is this? Excuse me? Wait, have you never seen this shit? No. It's William Peterson fighting a giant squid. Oh, I'm in. All right. I can get down with that. It fucking rules. I'm going to go with another movie about politicians being unable to do anything of substance during a crisis of this magnitude. Mm. And I know this movie gets a lot of hate, but I actually like this movie. I thought it was fun. Deep Impact. I'm going with Don't Look Up. Hey. Okay. That's a great one. Wait, did JT say Deep Impact? He yeah. sure did. You know what? That's a fine choice as well. I, I don't understand the hate for Don't Look Up. People are like, oh, it's a satire. No shit. Yeah. Right. That's the whole fucking point. <laughs> I have a second one to add. Yeah, go ahead. Contagion. I can oh. do Contagion. We've done it on the show but I'll let it slide since apparently we're not we're just that's not a rule anymore definitely makes you feel better (laughs) (laughs) all right well do we recommend Shin Godzilla to people that haven't seen the movie yes yeah Yeah, I I think that there's not really another Godzilla film like it Mm -hmm. as long as you can vibe with the tone of it and the the tonal shifts I think it's a really fun time yeah if you dug minus one or if you're just a Godzilla fan in general check it out Mm -hmm. Godzilla doesn't have much screen time which is totally fine because most of the best Godzilla movies he doesn't have much screen time Mm -hmm. and when he is on screen it's fucking awesome like every scene he is in it's fucking great yes and again like Nathan said if you can vibe with it it's the malignant test it's the litmus (laughs) test of can you fuck with this movie and it's satire and it's editing choices like can you get down with that and if you can you'll have a fucking blast of a time yeah JT final words do you recommend it final wars <laughs> Godzilla final horse. Christy, my girlfriend, watched it for the first time last night. And Humble brag, by the way. Keep going. <laughs> she said that it was rough to keep up with everything, like as mm. fast as everything was moving, but she said she had an amazing time, which I think that's what we're going with. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you don't have to keep up. That's kind of the brilliance of it. Like, yeah. you think you need to, you really don't. Yeah. Because, like I said, there's always somebody that comes in and tells you exactly what just happened. Yep. Yeah, it was easier to follow. I think JT has the right idea. You invite your honey over, <laughs> you, you sit down, <laughs> you, you put on Shin Godzilla. You turn on some Shin Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, you open up some champ. <laughs> <laughs> Moss, what about you? Yeah, I'll also humble brag here. I watched it with my wife uh-huh. for the first my time wife. His during wife. the pandemic. <laughs> my own wife, not, not JT's. Yeah, 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 no, no, we got it. We you, got it. you watched it with my wife? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's cool, I guess. Why is his wife funnier than my wife now? Like, what, the arc of this season has been so interesting to me. Uh, <laughs> I watched it with Dustin's wife. <laughs> Dustin's wife. <laughs> not yet. Hey, not yet. It's coming. But the first time we watched it, I remember Ale's reaction to it when they 
first showed Godzilla, she was like, ew, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> I showed Priscilla a gif of him. Mm-hmm. Like, we were out to eat, and I was like, look, I know you didn't watch the movie last night, but look, this is what he looked like when he first shows up, and she, like, spit her drink out. Like, she just spit it. <laughs> she couldn't handle it. That is a gif that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a gif to with a T on the end, for sure. I gotta stop recording. <laughs> If you have seen like Cody Ko and Noel Miller react to something and they did this one video where they're like, oh, you drink cum powder? Ew. <laughs> what, what the fuck? <laughs> that was the reaction every time I watch Shin Godzilla see Godzilla for the first time. It's funny because I got that reference. Oh. <laughs> I know exactly what it's like. I'll also say, I don't know if we're going to talk about this in next week's episode, the finale, mm. but I'll bring it back because we haven't really done this in quite a while, but Godzilla in this movie? Kind, kind of, of a scamp. scamp. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a scamp. Devious little scamp. <laughs> Becomes less of a scamp as he grows up, yeah. as, as do we all. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Debatable. Debatable. Mally, do you recommend 98 or whatever fucking movie you're going to talk about right now? I mean, you know, it's not a perfect film by any means, but I mean, the portrayal of Ghidorah as like this multi-dimensional, like like physical sense of dread and like black holes form around his body. Like that's fucking dope. Yeah, it is. It is. It really is. Absolutely. Do with that what you will. <laughs> you really tickled Moss with that one. I don't think Mally watched the fucking movie. No, of course he fucking did it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is the bit just now clicking for Moss? No, no, no. He, it's, it's very apparent. No, it's the audacity is just now clicking for Moss. <laughs> All right. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, leave feedback wherever you are. If you want to, you can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can check out our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silverlines Playlist. And you can email us at the Silverlines Playlist at gmail.com. <laughs> It's really hitting, Moss, yeah. that like we've graduated to now it's funny because Mally doesn't care. <laughs> it's funny that I prepares so much for these things uh-huh. and one of the co-hosts uh-huh. doesn't even watch the movie. Uh-huh. He's the USA in this circumstances and we're all Japan. <laughs> What are these noises Moss is making? <laughs> I was so fucking excited for this and Valley didn't even fucking watch it. I know. <laughs> Welcome to every week for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Well, look, we have one last order of business to do here. <laughs> Next week is our... God fucking damn it. I'm trying to wrap up here. I'm sorry. Next week is our season finale. Uh huh. Sure it is. We don't have it lined up yet. I mm-hmm. think maybe season two, we kind of did this, but we have two potentials mm. that we're talking about doing for a season finale next week. So I'm going to flip a coin here, or I guess spin a wheel. Oh. Okay. Well, this doesn't seem rigged at fucking all. <laughs> you could have put your third choice in here as well. I could have. I could have. But look, we'll do two out of three okay. to make sure it's fair. Yeah. The old meatloaf gambit. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want our guests to say what the potential choices are here, mm. but I'm going to spin this wheel. We'll do two out of three times. Whoever wins best two out of three, that's what we're going to cover for next week. So mm. what's interesting is I think both of these choices do have a good connection to this movie. I agree. So I think this is a good double pairing here, a good options we have. It should be noted that DC has been pitching one of these choices every fucking season, Forever. and I refuse to agree to it sheerly out of spite. <laughs> and I'll say this, whatever Whatever one doesn't win in this little wind spill here, I'm going to pick to do next season. Okay. So there you go. So we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do both of these. No problem. But all right, here we go. We're going to spin. Ooh. My money's on Guyver too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of these wacky wheels that goes both ways. <laughs> up, 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 what up, the up, fuck? Up, no, it's, getting, it's getting fast again. <laughs> <laughs> I did set the duration for an eight second spin. I debated on a 30 second spin. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Nothing like fucking dead air. Set it for meat spin. <laughs> Set it to meat spin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it spinning back up? I think it's getting speed again, fellas. <laughs> 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 All right, all right. That's one. Someone pull up this uh, website and make sure it can't be rigged. Yeah, I don't trust this at fucking all. This is Moss's suggestion. I got a third party here to fucking pick this. This is his website that he selected. So Okay, seems a bit conflict of interest, but whatever. (laughs) Moss coded a spinner website. Well, Moss was interested in this episode. All right, second spin. Second spin here. I love that it has to rev up the spin. <laughs> this is so stupid. I agree. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, 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 
<laughs> is it glitchy for everybody else too? Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Okay. The original plan was to flip a coin, I which know. takes four <laughs> seconds. And now we're playing Wheel of Fortune. But I feel like you can't visualize a coin flip yeah. as well as you can spinning a wheel. Uh, so here we go. Uh, 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 wait, uh, wait a minute. It might spin back up. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, it's still moving. What uh, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> All okay, right, okay, so we got right. one for each. Yep, yep. All right, here we go. Whatever this lands on, we're covering. This is the hottest segment in podcasting right here. <laughs> All of us are on the edge of our seats. Nathan, you looking sharp, though. I'll give you that. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You looking good. Although I'm a little upset at no point have you taken the tie off and worn it as a headband. <laughs> looking like sharp cheddar. <laughs> shirt smells rank, though. It does. It smells terrible. Dang, I should have did that with Prop Cop. His the stinky rank shirt. shirt? No, Ugh. the new one. Mm. The new one in the plastic. Mm. Nicely folded. <laughs> Uh 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 all right, so here, look, we've, we've got our season finale selected, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a clue what we're going to be talking about. War Horse is the best war movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon, but I know the Nazis can't. What if we come back next week and Mally watched War Horse instead? <laughs> <laughs> or Giver 2. Or Giver 2. <laughs> Or Speed 2. I think these two movies tie together kind of well. Mm -hmm. like, if we were doing Minus One instead, mm. like what a double feature this would be. What, this and War Horse? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it's like a chicken in the egg. Mm -hmm. I think that Mally's going to watch the second choice, even though he chose <laughs> to not review it out of spite. Damn, Moss has got me pegged. <laughs> I love a good pegging. Anyway, yeah. I was trying to do the math in my head on that one. <laughs> I saw Nathan being like, should I say it? <laughs> You saw the, the wheel spin it. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Moss, JT, thanks for coming on. Talk about Sheen Godzilla. Sheen. And uh, I can't wait. Next week, see the finale, boys. It's going to be a bloated episode. I can already tell. It's going to be a long and so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have nothing to say about next week's episode? I mean, if we can beat our strangers episode length. Episode's 44 minutes long. <laughs> like a tight 30. <laughs> this is the shortest episode I've been on. Same. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. I'm kind of surprised, but. Uh, I think this is the first episode JT's been on sober. <laughs> yeah. But considering Mally didn't watch the movie, that's why it's so short. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Tune in next week for our season finale. Can you believe it? Cannot wait. And as always, do as you like. Let them fight. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. What did you see, old man? A lot of fish. And that wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!